This is question two of the 2019 Ordinary Level Leaving Cert Paper 2. In this question, we're going to answer multiple questions about coordinate geometry. We're going to find out slopes, equations of lines, and area of triangles. In the description below, you can find a link to an image of this question if you don't have it already. On the board, I've drawn the picture they've given us. It's two lines with three points. We have P and Q and R here. Here are all the points, all the numbers they've given us for these points. So they ask us to find the slope of PQ. Here's PQ here, and they ask us to find the slope of that. Now we have a formula for that, or if you rather, we can just draw a triangle. If we draw a triangle, we just need to get this height divided by this length, and then make sure we're going positive or negative. So in this case, it's positive. Let's use the formula. I think most students rather to use the formula. It's given to you in the book. It is m is equal y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So where x and y are two points. So what two points do we have? We have p and q. So let's write out p and q again. 4, 2, and 8, 5. Let's see. It doesn't matter which way we do it. The slope of this is the same as the slope of that. This formula will make sure to get the right sign for us. So x1, y1, one point. x2, y2, a second point. And we just fill these numbers in. Okay, y2 is 5 minus 2. Now you could have used, um, these numbers could be the different way around. So instead of 5 minus 2, you might have 2 minus 5. That is okay. You will get the same answer, and I'll tell you why in a moment x2 is 8, minus x1 is 4. Again, you might have the, the other way around, 4 minus 8. And that's why it doesn't matter, because they're both the other way around. We'll just get different signs out. For example, here you get 3 over 4. Whereas you may have got minus 3 divided by minus 4, which is also 3 over 4. Let me just rub this small part out here, and I'll fit in part B. Um, B asks us, let's see, B asks us to find the equation of the line PQ and give your answer in the form of AX plus BY plus C equals 0. And they also say, don't get too afraid by a lot of these things, A, B and C are elements of the integers, the set of integers. You actually don't need to worry too much about that. It's just they, they will usually write things like that in questions to make things just nice and safe. Um, but like I said, don't worry too much about it. Okay, really what they're asking us is find the equation of PQ. Once again, we have a formula for this. Y minus Y1 is equal to MX minus X1. And in this case, we need two things. We need a point, one, the one point, X1, Y1. So you need any point that's on PQ. So you can pick any one. I'll pick P, it's right here. But again, you could have picked Q. You'll get the same answer out, x1, y1, and we need the slope, m. And that's just what we found here. m is equal 3 over 4. So, okay, we just need to fill this in. y, stays y. If you have a look at the question again, there's a y in the question. So we need a y. So that's what we don't replace this with any number. We need y to still exist. Minus um, y1 is 2 equals m is 3 over 4 x is x and x1 is a 4 minus a 4. okay now we have um, a 4 in the bottom row here that's awkward to deal with so let's get rid of that and we can do that because this is only one term There's, it looks like lots of things but it's one term because they're multiplying each other and it's easy to move multiply and divide when there's only one term so let's multiply both sides by 4. if i multiply the left by 4 and the right by 4, this 4 and this 4 cancel. So it's really just like moving the 4 over the other side. And let's multiply this out. We get 4y minus 8, 4 times 2, is equal 3 times x is 3x. Three, 3 times minus 4 is minus 12. And they asked us to get everything on the same side. All the x's, all the y's. Um, you can choose to move the x over this side. But I like to keep my x positive. You don't have to do this, but I like to keep my x positive. Did they tell us we want positive numbers? No, they didn't. Okay, that's good. 
And so I will move the y. So let's take 4y from both sides. We will get uh, 3x, and we're taking 4y away from the left, so it's gone. So we need to be fair and take 4y from the right. Minus 12 is still there. Again, they wanted ax, that might be a, by, that might be b, but they want numbers. They want 0 on the other side. We don't have that. So let's add 8 to both sides. So minus 8 plus 8 is 0. So we're at 3x minus 4y. Um, yeah, let's do this in one go. Plus 8 minus 12 plus 8 is minus 4. If you're bad at doing that, at minus 12 plus 8 in your head, lots of students um, are really bad at it. Use a calculator until you get used to it. I promise you will in the future. Now, also students to say, but they said they wants to equal zero. This is zero equals. That's the same thing. If zero equals this, well, then this equals zero. You don't have to write this part. Okay, so that's a full marks for part B. I'll go ahead and rub this out, and we'll do C and D. Part C asks us to write down, I could have done this before rubbing it out, actually, to write down the slope of any line perpendicular to PQ. The slope of any line that's perpendicular to PQ. This doesn't look quite perpendicular, so they want any line that looks like this. But it could be this one, could be this one. That's why they say any line. Really what they're asking for is the slope, because this slope and this slope are the same. Now here's a clue. They ask you to write down. They didn't ask you to figure it out. They didn't ask you to work it out. They didn't ask you to prove it. They asked you just to write it down. That's giving you a clue that you are able, I'm just trying to remember what the slope of PQ is, you're able to write down the answer. That's it. That's all I have to do. Now I'll tell you where this goes from. You Hopefully a lot of, you, a lot of students tend to remember to get the slope of a perpendicular line, we turn it upside down and change the sign. So just to remind you, um, the slope of PQ, let's go M PQ is equal to 3 over 4. So this was part one. So therefore, the slope of perpendicular to that is turn it upside down, four over three, and change the sign. Just, uh, just so you know where that comes from, let's call this one m. So m multiplied by three over four, that's pq, has to equal minus one. That's, that's what we're really doing when we're, we're turning it upside down, change that. Because if you multiply both sides by four, we get 3m is equal to minus 4. Divide both sides by 3, we get m is equal to minus 4 over 3. So this is what we're really doing. But it's okay if you just remember, turn it upside down and change the sign. I would rather you remember all of it, but that will work. That's all the answer. That's all they needed. That was enough. Okay, let me do part D. Part D asks us, find the area of the triangle or... Q, um, sorry, P, Q, R. P, Q, R. This triangle here. We have to find the area of that. Let me draw that again. Um, I'll put it here. And this time I'll put the points in it. Uh, let's, let me try and get these right here. Two, um, four, two. Where's Q? Q is eight, five. And the last one is two, eleven. So the area of this triangle. Now there's two ways to do this. One is big and messy. You have to get the length of this, the length of this, the length of this. That's, you have to use the distance formula three times. And then you'd have to use some trigonometry, uh, maybe the cosine formula, to get one of the angles. And then there's a formula to get the area. Now that will work. It'll just take you a long time. There's a much easier way. We can find out the area of a triangle if... One of these sides is at zero, zero. Here's zero, zero over here, roughly. If one of these guys is at zero, zero, this is easy. Why am I telling you that? None of them are at zero, zero. So here's the trick. We move them over. It's an area of a triangle. We, just, we can move it. And here's how I'll do this. I'll write these numbers down again. Four, two. I'll give myself plenty of room, actually. Eight, five. 2, 11. Let's see, this guy's closest, but you can move any of them you want. But let's move this one here. Let's move him, a little arrow. And what will we do? We'll take 4 away from this, minus 4. And we'll take 2 away from the y. 
and we get zero, zero. In the picture, what I'm doing is moving him there. Now, I can't just move them all there. That won't look like the same triangle. But if I move this guy over here and this one over here, I will get another triangle. My drawing's not the best, but should look the same. If we do it right, if you draw it correctly, you don't have to draw it. It will look the same. So let's move this guy the same way. Same way we did here. I took four away and I took two away. Eight minus four is four. Five minus two is three. So that's where this guy would have gone to. This point here would be four, three, which should be more like there. My drawing wasn't the best, I apologize. Let's move this guy, minus four, minus two. Two minus four is minus two. 11 minus two is nine. So I've moved all of these guys in the same way. So there, the triangle, this triangle, forget this one, this triangle is easy to do. We have a formula for that. The formula is, um, let, me, let, me, let me put it down here, a is equal to a half times the absolute value of x1, y2, minus y1, x2. Let me just double check that. Um, yeah, that's the formula. Okay, so this is in your formula book. It's in the coordinate geometry section. They give you this formula, where x1 and y1, here's x1, y1, that's one point. Here's x2, y2, second point. And the third point is just zero. That's why this formula looks so neat. There is actually a formula for three points for this one, but it does not look as small and pretty as this. It would be much bigger than this and something we don't want to deal with. All right, let me, let me rub this part out here and we'll, do, we'll find out the actual number over here. So we have a is equal to a half times this. Let me write that out again. a is equal a half. And let's start filling in these things. x1 is 4. y2 is 9. And minus is a minus. y1 is 3. And uh, x2 is minus 2. Put them in brackets so you make sure the minus doesn't get lost. And then now we, we just multiply out what we can, a half. I haven't explained what these two lines are yet, so we better ignore them. Hopefully you know. 4 times 9 is 36. Um, minus 3 times minus 2. Let's do this slowly. That's minus minus 6. 3 times minus 2 is minus 6, and there's still a minus. And this is equal, I probably should have done that, I'll run out of room now. 36 minus minus 6 is plus 6, so minus multiplying by minus is plus 6, uh, so that's plus 6. That is equal to a half 32. So what do these two lines mean? This means the absolute value. It means whatever is inside there is a positive. Even if it said minus 2, we write 2. If it said minus 42, I'd write 42. If it says plus 42, I still write plus 42. What those two lines do is they guarantee it's positive. And the reason we need that is because the area of a triangle is positive. So we need something like that. So a half of 42 is 21. And that's our final answer. That is the area of this triangle. It's the area of this new triangle, but it's also the area of this old triangle which is what they asked us. So 21. Okay, so the, if you have any questions about any of those, please put them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.